Okay, we're working in Intermediate Algebra, Section 4.5. The topic is Solving Rational and Literal Equations. This section starts on page 160 of your book. Example 1 on page 160 says 1 over x plus 2 over 3x equals 1 over 5. The directions say solve. So we're not just simplifying now. We need to solve or isolate this x to find out what value of x would make this a true statement. Uh, we're going to do some similar concepts here. Uh, we're going to look at the denominators uh, to find the common denominator. The common denominator we know for 3 and 5 is 15. And since these two terms also have an x, we'll have to put an x in that common denominator. So that makes the common denominator 15x. This time we are not going to change the denominators. We're just going to multiply through the entire equation by the common denominator 15x, but we're going to use 15x over 1. And we're going to distribute that. Okay, so not top and bottom, just the top. Use your common denominator over 1. This concept is called clearing the fractions. And once you do this, you're going to find that uh, all your denominators will reduce off and you'll be left with just whole numbers. So don't forget, top times top, bottom times bottom when you do each of these terms. So that's what we're going to do. 15x times 1 is 15x on the top, x on the bottom, plus 15x times 2 is 30x over 3x equals 15x times 1, 15x on the bottom, 1 times 5. So top times top, bottom times bottom. Then we're going to go through and we're going to reduce. There are uh, all monomials here, so we can reduce off all of these terms. So we're going to reduce an x off here, so that makes this 15. We're going to reduce an x off here, and also 30 divided by 3 is 10. So this becomes 10. And then we'll reduce here. This x does not reduce because there's no x on the bottom. So the x is going to stay, but 15 divided by 5 is 3. So this becomes 3x. And now, instead of having this complicated equation with fractions in it, we have this equivalent equation with all whole numbers. And I'm going to assume that you guys know the next few steps. Combine like terms, isolate the x. So this becomes 25 equals 3x. Divide off that 3. We have x equals 25 over 3. OK, for example 2. At the top of page 161, we have 1 minus 1 over x equals 30 over x squared. Uh, the common denominator, when I look at these denominators, I have an x and x squared. The common denominator is x squared. So again, we're going to multiply through the entire equation by x squared. You can use it over 1 if you need to, because we have some fractions here. That might be helpful. Uh, we're just going to distribute this x squared. Let's just distribute. So the first term turns out to be x squared, because x squared times 1 is just x squared. The second term will be x squared over x, which we'll reduce in a minute. The third term is 30 x squared over x squared. All right. Um, then we're going to need to reduce. Well, this first term doesn't need to do any reducing. The second term, don't forget x squared is x times x. So one of these x's will reduce off. So this becomes x minus x equals and those reduce to make 30. All right, so here we have um, what we call a quadratic equation because of this x squared here. All right, um, you're not going to be able to isolate x without using some more, more advanced techniques here, uh, which we will cover in chapter 6. But for right now, this is a quadratic equation. The first step is to make it equal 0, so this 30 needs to come to the other side. So we'll have x squared minus x minus 30 equals 0. With quadratic equations, we make it equal 0. And then we factor if possible. So the factors here will be x minus 6, x plus 5. If you need to review factoring, I've got plenty of videos on this channel that review some factoring here. And then the concept is what we call the zero product property. If this times this equals 0, it follows that one of these factors has to equal 0. So we take each factor, 
and we set it equal to zero. And again, like I said, we're going to do this some more in more detail in chapter six. And then we isolate x. So we get x equals six and x equals negative five. Both answers are good solutions. All right, for example three, on page 161, we have one over four plus one over seven equals one over k. Looking at these denominators, the common denominator for four and seven is 28. Then we need this k in there. So the common denominator is 28k. So we're gonna multiply the entire equation by 28k and we're gonna use over one. This is distribute. So the first term will be 28k over four Second term is 28k over 7 equals 28k over k, and then we're going to reduce. 28 divided by 4 is 7. This k is going to stay since it has nothing to reduce with. So this is 7k. This one reduces to make 4k, and this time the k's do reduce, so we just have 28. Combine like terms, isolate your k. So this is 11k equals 28 divide by 11 you get k equals 28 over 11 all right example 4 is on page 162 4x over x minus 3 equals 4x plus 1 over x plus 2 um, I'm actually going to use a different method here and this is uh, called the law of proportions um, if you recall what a proportion is, it's just a fraction equal to another fraction. This method I'm going to use is the cross multiply um, because with proportions we know that these diagonal products are equal. Now this does not work if you have any other terms on here, pluses or minuses on your other fractions. But if you have just a fraction equal to another fraction, you can just cross multiply and make them equal. So once I do that, this 4x times x plus 2 will equal this, x minus 3 times 4x plus 1. It only works with a proportion or one fraction equal to another fraction. It does not work if you have any pluses or minuses, other terms on here. Um, but effectively that gets rid of the fractions for you. And now you can start distributing and uh, combining like terms and all of that good stuff. So when I distribute here, I get 4x squared plus 8x. When I distribute over here, um, you've actually got double distribute or FOIL going on here. So this becomes 4x squared plus x minus 12x minus 3. And I need to combine those like terms there in the middle. So this is 4x squared minus 11x minus 3 equal to 4x squared plus 8x. Now, if you remember the last example, we also had an x squared in the last example, which made it a quadratic equation, um, which we then said we need to equal 0. But this equation looks a little similar. But when you try to combine these like terms, these 4x squareds, if I subtract this one off, they actually cancel each other. So those 4x squareds are actually gone. So now I can put my 11x to the other side and it will become a positive 11x when I do that. That makes 19x equals negative three. And then to isolate x, I will divide off 19. Oops, there's the negative. And I get x equals negative three over 19. All right, example five is on the top of page 163. It says 13 over x minus one plus seven over x minus one equals five plus 20 over x minus one. And this is a very complicated rational equation here. Uh, the good news is all the denominators are the same. So that will be your common denominator, x minus one. We're not gonna change everything to x minus one though. We're gonna multiply by x minus one and you can put it over one if it helps you, but this is just gonna be distribute. Okay, now um, you'll be tempted to write 13 times x minus 1, but if you remember when we simplified rational expressions, if I multiply these two fractions together, 
these x minus 1's will cancel each other because they're, they're identical binomials. So I'm going to mentally cancel these, and that will leave me with just the 13 coming down. Okay? The same thing will happen when I distribute times this term. These x minus 1's will cancel, and I'll just be left with a plus 7 here. Now when I distribute this x minus 1 times this 5, there is no x minus 1 in the denominator here to cancel. So this 5 has to get multiplied times that x minus 1 that's in the numerator, since it doesn't cancel with anything here. When I get ready to do it times this term, again, the x minus 1's cancel, and I'm left with a plus 20. Um, that's the fast way to get rid of these denominators. Um, and then we're just going to simplify, isolate x. So what do we have here? We have like terms here, making 20. We're going to distribute this. So this is 5x minus 5, and then I have a plus 20 here. Combining like terms here, would give me 20 equals 5x plus 15. Uh, subtract the 15 from both sides. I end up with 5 equals 5x, and then isolate the x. If I divide by 5, you end up with x equals 1, because 5 over 5 reduces to make 1. And this is really good, a really nice answer, until I go back and look at my original equation, which has x minus 1 in the denominator. Now this is going back to a topic we discussed in section 4.1, the domain of a rational function or a rational equation has to do with what values of x are acceptable. And that means that we can't have any values of x that make the denominator turn into zero because fractions with zero in the denominator are undefined. So if we look at domain here, what that means for us is that um, x minus 1 cannot equal 0. I'm going to write that here for domain. Because the denominators are x minus 1, x minus 1 cannot equal 0. And when I isolate that x, that means that x cannot equal 1. Well, this is a problem for us, because 1 is the only number that actually solves this equation. So if this happens, and in the course of solving, you get a value that is actually discluded by your domain. That means that if you put 1 in here, if I put a 1 here, I'll have 1 minus 1. These denominators will all turn into 0, which means these fractions will be undefined. So x cannot equal 1. So this solution is no good because of the domain, and that means there actually is no solution to this equation. Only because when I solved, the actual value that x came out to be is the same as one of the numbers excluded by the domain. So there's no solution for this equation. Alright, I'm going to do the word problems on the next video, so come back for part two.